Hey YouTube, welcome back to the Allegheny Northern in N-Scale. Today we're doing a how-to video, and this is how-to on ice and melting snow. So for those of you who have been following the channel, you know that winter is one of my favorite seasons. Unfortunately, winter gets a bit intense as far as taking over a whole layout. So my solution to that was to do transitions. Basically, my layout would be set in fall, which is my first favorite season, and then it would slowly transition into a scene that was strictly winter before transitioning back into fall, where the most of the layout is, is seasoned. So, growing up here in southwestern Pennsylvania, it's been uh, a blessing that I've been able to experience all four seasons. I do technically like all four seasons and for various reasons, but the transition between the seasons is interesting because the weather is so different and it creates such different weather patterns. It's, it's very difficult to model, at least convincingly. So there are a lot of products that are out on the market today that make it easier to replicate some of what we see in nature. And I'm finding one of the most complicated things is snow and ice. Now, I've seen a lot of people that are doing models that sort of just, they take a scene and they dump snow over top of it and, and okay, here we have we have winter. And I, I guess if you're doing a, a quick Christmas display or something, that that's probably okay. Uh, but that doesn't work for me because there is a lot of color in winter, even if, if you're not thinking, oh, geez, there's nothing that's green, it's, uh, it's kind of gross. Yeah, the colors are, are gross. I'm not going to disagree with that, but they're not all white. In fact, there's lots of yellows and there's browns. And when there's snow on the ground, you introduce a whole nother set of colors in the blue spectrum because of the way the snow reflects the light. So you kind of have to figure about all that stuff when you're setting up your model. So here we are on the transition scene. This is the removable bridge section of my layout that allows me to get into the layout. And... Although I'm not completely done with what I'm doing yet. You, you see where we're going from fall there in the corner and we eventually slide into a little more winter here. And I have this ice pack right here. And on the side of the road too where water would collect. And around the melting snow and there's some dirty ice because let's face it, when snow melts, it is pretty pretty gross and dirty. So that's the effect that we're looking for in these, these transition scenes. I'm gonna show you how I did that here in just a moment. Okay, first I wanna take you into a standard scene. Now standard scene here is set in late fall. So there's very little green on the layout. Most of it is in, in color. What is green is the, the plants that will always be green, the evergreens. But everything else is, is showing shades of color. Now, with the shades of color, there's there's a whole other topic on that as far as, you know, I see these very vibrant layouts that the, the reds and the oranges and they're all mixed in. And um, that's not really how fall goes. Well, it is for a day or two, I guess. You know, you have, you have a very short window where, where fall is very bright and very colorful, but then it quickly goes to, to drab, uh, and it looks more like, say that. So when you look at a hillside, it looks almost, almost uniform. When you get into late fall, it looks more like, say that, where you have some color popping here and there, but by and large, it's not, it's not very colorful. So when we transition from something that looks more like this to something that is more like this, there's this awkward space where it's, some things are green, some things are not green, some things are dead, some things aren't dead. And then there's the question of when does the snow happen? And snow doesn't stick to everything at first, right? So we have to have a transition period and usually that happens sometime in November, December here in this area, and then it transitions out sometime in March or April back into spring. So what we wanna do here is simulate snow that has fallen. It's been too warm, so it hasn't stuck quite yet, 
but it's still cold enough to make ice. There are a lot of snow products out on the market today, and I'm not showing you all of them that are available. I'm showing you the ones that I have and the ones that I'm using. So you do your research. There's a lot of stuff out there. But to make our ice and snow, we're going to go to Woodland Scenics, tried and true. We're going to have the soft lake snow. We're going to go to Knock. We're going to go to their powdered snow. This stuff is actually, this, this is probably one of the better snow products out there. It really, really looks like snow. Um, and it's very powdery and very light. So I, I do recommend this if you're doing anything in snow. Then we're jumping over to Deluxe Materials. I believe they're out of the UK, and we're using their shoveled snow product. It's it's really nice. I found it sort of by accident on YouTube, and they have a whole line of snow products, uh, which I'd really like to try because I, I think I might get some better results. But um, right now I have the shoveled snow, and it looks, as promised, like shoveled snow. And you can affix it to the layout just like all the other snow products. And here, let's go up to where they're plowing. So it does look very much like shoveled snow. So you can get a very nice result with, with that stuff. Okay. Some other things are there are some paste. Now, these are very popular with the wargaming and modeling uh, crew that does uh, the Army models. And I've seen some very convincing models done on YouTube with, with those products. Here's another one that I just happened to pick up at, I, was, I think it was a craft store. Not really sure where it came from, but um, there's there's some options there. Anyway, the guys that know what they're doing with this stuff, really, really awesome. And you can get it from, obviously, Tamiya. There's also AK Interactive. I think even Vallejo has their own, their own version of it. Last, we're going to use realistic water. We need something to base the ice off of. Once again, you can use different products. You can go to a resin. You can do uh, you can do the realistic water. You can do a gloss medium or a gloss gel. There are options here, but we're going to be using realistic water as our ice base. And then the secret ingredient, AK Interactive. These are the ice sparkles, and these things are are interesting. They show you they show you some things you can do with them, and it's pretty cool. So these um. These these act very different uh, than, than a lot of the products that I've used. And let me show you what I mean by that. Let's let's get this mixed up. Today our AO is going to be this area right here between the river and the snow scene. And we want to get this a little bit better as far as the transition goes. So we know what our products are as far as what we're working with. But now it's time to choose our our weapon of choice for this particular uh, mission and we have we have two so our primary is going to be this palette knife and it's because what we're making is basically going to be a very thick paste so we need we need that and then our secondary our sidearm here is going to be a brush now the reason we want the brush is it lets us get in a little bit finer detail and work the paste around a little bit so uh, you're probably going to end up ruining whatever brush you use because try as I might to clean them afterwards, they just, they, they don't come clean. So do not use good brushes for what we're about to do. Okay, there are two tactics here. One, you can cover the layout with some Woodland Scenics Realistic Water, which we have right here. This is not the deep pour. This is just the, the regular stuff. And then here's our ice sparkles. That's what they look like, little little granulars. And all I'm going to do is take a big old spoonful of this stuff and mix it right into. Now, you will notice that this dissolves rather quickly and it takes a fairly good amount to get what you're looking for. But once you start mixing it, you're going to see that it starts turning into a, a paste. And you want to get rid of most of the water effect and turn it more into a paste. Once you've gotten that consistency, you're ready to start modeling. Okay, I've turned this into a bit of a gel here, as you can see, and that's what I'm gonna start working with. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, step one looks a lot like using realistic water, and all I'm going to do is pour it into place where I want it. And then, as you notice, because I've added that ice gel, it's not really, it's not really flowing anymore. This is where our palette knife comes in handy. And we don't necessarily want it built up thick because ice tends to 
find the lowest spot, just like, you know, water, oh, it's gonna, it was water at first, right? So it's gonna find the lowest spot, it's gonna flow into it, and then it's going to set and freeze. So we wanna tease it until we get it kinda how we want it, avoiding the high areas, going for the low areas. And once we're happy with it, we can we can stop playing with it and teasing it. Now you got to remember, there's different types of ice. There's very flat ice, you know, that the water has just poured into an area. It's frozen, and now it's 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 there. Or you've got ice that's been trampled and broken and redone. You can get that effect depending on how you manipulate the ice product. So if you want broken ice. There's the best way to do that is, is really with, with resin, but you can do it here. Once this dries, you can actually crack this material a little bit. Now, I don't have any of that because obviously I'm out here in the wilderness, so um, I won't be showing you that. <laughs> but um, there are some videos on YouTube, you can find them. Um, I did so. Let me uh, let me finish up this mix that I got here and I'll show you what we look like when we're done. Okay, I wanted to show you this, this beautiful paste that we're getting here right along the railroad tracks, between the tracks, up here. Now see, it looks almost, what's nice is when it dries, it dries kind of clear, clear and sparkly, just like ice would. And it gives you this just absolutely gorgeous view of what's underneath, and it's just like ice. Um, so, I mean, that's exactly what ice would do um, in, in, in the real world here. So. Um, I've taken my palette knife here and I've got just a little bit of material on it and I'm just sort of, you can see how thick it is. And all I'm doing is finding the low lying areas and I'm using the, the palette knife. I actually haven't touched the brush yet. I haven't needed to. And I'm sp spreading it around and anybody who's either been to a, a snowy area where you get to freeze and thaw or, or lives in one, you know what happens is it melts, it turns into slush, and then that slush sits in the yard because it's everything's so wet, it doesn't sink, and you end up with a slushy looking puddle just like that. So find the low area on your terrain and mix your, your mixture in. Okay, so I've gone over some existing snow. It was a snow paste, and I've added our ice mixture around here. And as you can tell, it's, it's got a lot more of the realistic water content in it than it does the ice sparkles. <clears throat> so it looks a, it looks more like I've got water sitting on the tracks and that's not the look I'm going for here. So fear not, uh, what you can do is if you get something like this, you can actually take the ice sparkles and with a spoon or other utensil, you can add the ice sparkles to the setting mixture and it'll cloud it up as it absorbs the material a little bit, which is fine. Uh, because when it dries, you're going to get a very icy looking mixture. So, and this is, this falls under the seasoned taste uh, category because you're just going to want to add enough until it looks right to the eye. And I, I know that as we're coming into summer here, the last thing you want to do is research what snow and ice looks like, but I would recommend it so you can see what it looks like naturally. And that'll give you a real good idea of what this should look like. So you'll get something that looks a little bit like that. And when it dries, uh, some of that material may get absorbed by the liquid, uh, the, the still liquid part of the realistic water, and that's fine. Uh, you can come back with a very soft brush afterwards and pick up any loose material. But that is essentially what it'll look like when it dries, and it looks like looks like ice. Now, where your brush comes in handy is in fine details like this, where you sort of have a little bit of a lump where the, where the liquid water stopped pouring. And I just take the brush and I tease it out a little bit because ice usually, it, it needs, it's just like water, it needs something to stop against, right? So if it doesn't have a flat edge and you have a, a ridge there, you either need to put some snow or something to, to make it look like it had a reason to stop. Otherwise, you can taper it down to a zero edge and you're done. 
Now some of these areas that have already started to dry, you've got the icy look. But once again, you have this edge here that's unrealistic. So we need to come back and we need to soften these edges. If you've got enough snow and you don't want to add any more snow, you can once again use your brush and just tease the edge of that down into the scenery so that it doesn't look like it's got a harsh line that just sort of melts melts away. And that that would be acceptable. You could you could end it there. Or you can put some shoveled snow, some realistic snow. You can put snow somehow around this and soften those edges. Either way is acceptable. I mean, it, it all works. So for this one, I kind of like the look that I'm getting here. You know, this, this does look like some water just, some of the snow melted or maybe some of it never, you know, hit the ground, never actually froze. And now we've got this this puddle here, and as the colder temperatures at night are setting in, we're getting we're getting some freezing and thawing. One thing I will tell you about this process is if you're working anywhere around switches, you've either got to do one of two things. You've got to be very, very careful, or you've got to protect it with some, some tape of some sort, because if you get this mix into a switch, your next video should be how to replace a damaged switch so don't do that be very very careful when you're working around your track work because this stuff will get into your it'll flow into all the places you don't want it and it'll gum everything up so be very careful when you're mixing around your layout before we move on i want to show you i guess the three different types of snow that i was able to make or ice out of out of one single batch. So we have the we have the batch where we added a little bit more ice sparkles to get the the effect we were looking for. We had some of the snow paste down already. Now that was dried before I went over it, but now it's giving you that thick ice snow look in certain areas. So so you definitely want that somewhere. We've gone through you know where it looks like it's in a field. It's kind of thick. So you've got some water that was sitting on top of the ground. It froze. Some snow got on it you have your traditional ice, which is just the nice thick paste sort of worked into the scenery. But you can, you can actually add another step to this, and that is you can add a little bit more liquid, uh, some of the liquid realistic water. Now what that does is it makes it flow. And when it flows, now this is all, this is where we have our paste, right? So you can see, you can see that it's all up against this, scenery here and you can see here okay I've got an ice sparkle but I don't really have that thick pasty ice look okay what happened here was there was realistic water it was in a higher content than the ice sparkles so most of it sank into the scenery and it gives us this very fine ice look without the thick heavy feel of you know a lot of ice so by modulating the content of ice sparkle to realistic water or glass medium, whatever, whatever medium you're using, you can get different ice effects, once again, based on the different types of ice that you would see in nature. So we're gonna mix up an extra batch of this uh, and we're gonna place it in some areas where there might be some thin ice, but it's not, it's, it's not to this degree. Okay, I know some of you folks are probably more recipe driven and you wanna know, okay, well, how much of, of what thing did you add and how much of you know the other thing did you add and, and what's, what's the ratio? And uh, I guess you're, you're, you're just gonna be, uh, you're just gonna be mad at me because I'm not gonna tell you what it is. And, and the reason is because I, I, I don't know. Um, I sort of just mix it to taste and you know I, I approach it the same way I do cooking is that if it looks good and it smells good and tastes good, then, then the recipe was right. So what I did here was I mixed a little bit soupier mix of, of the realistic water and the ice crystals, and ice sparkles from AK Interactive. And I'm just pouring it just like you would with realistic water. And I'm letting it find its own level. And it's a little bit, because it's thicker, it's, it's not, you know, floating as much, but you can see that it's settling into the layout because the scenery is not sealed. Obviously, you know, when you, when you do 
liquid water or, or um, realistic water. I keep calling it liquid water. When you do realistic water, you put a latex paint down that seals the the scenery so that the material doesn't sink in like it's doing now. In this case, we want most of this to sink in and disappear, and all we want left is the ice sparkle that looks like that. So we're sort of changing the mixture to be a little bit more water than ice. And once again, I'm going for the low areas. So naturally, where would the water settle when things start to melt? And that's where I want this. So right here, prime example, I've got a nice pocket between the roadbed and the scenery. So that's gonna fill up with melt and you're gonna have ice there. And we all know that all railroads keep their ballast perfectly clean and maintained at all times. So, you know, there would never be a drainage issue anywhere along our, our line. But assuming in a world where track's not perfectly maintained, we would probably have some melt. And even in areas where you've got heavy snow, you're still gonna have ice because you can't get away from that melt that's gonna happen. Even when snow is falling and it's accumulating, it still starts melting almost immediately. You will get to a point where your mix becomes thicker because most of the realistic water has run out. And at that point, you've got the original ice mix. So you can either go back to your putty knife or you can add more realistic water if you wanna spread that out a little bit. Um, in this case, I'm gonna add a little bit more realistic water and keep going. Okay, uh, I know it is easy to get carried away with this process, just like any other process in modeling. You know, you get something you really like and you, you want to do it everywhere. So you have to sort of restrain yourself a little bit because well, it's not going to be everywhere. So pick your low spots where you've got for sure going to have some ice and snow accumulation. Give it some flair, give it some, some variation and then know when you have enough, when that technique is, that scenery looks good, so don't, don't add any more. So we've reached that point. Okay, now comes the next step. We need to get the snow to wrap around our ice a little bit better and help this transition. There's two ways to do it. I recommend the second way, and that is wait till it dries. Because what happens is if you get a little bit of errant snow and it lands in your still drying ice, then you can't clean it off. But once this dries and it is rock solid, you're, you're good to go. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna let this set up and, and get somewhat hard so it's not gonna accept our snow. And then we're gonna come back and add the final touches to complete this scene. Okay, we're back and we've given it, it's been about two hours and my ice is dry. It's hard to the touch, so it's ready to go for the next step. Now what I want to do is just sort of reinforce around that area what the um, snowpack is like. So in areas like this where you'd have the snow on one side and then it's melting off into the, the wilderness there, I need to make sure that the snow and the ice meet. I don't want to have a gap between there. And then in these areas down here, I just need to make sure that this ice and snow, that there's reasonably some sort of water flow that would have created this. So I need some pile of snow somewhere. It needs to be, it needs to be somewhere um, near, near some snow that would indicate that, okay, we had some freezing, we had some thawing, and, and now we have ice. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of the snow products I showed at the beginning of the video, and we're gonna put them around areas like this where we have ice and no snow. All I'm gonna do is take the, a spoon and I'm gonna put the material in sort of clumps in that area. Okay, my first go-to is the Woodland Scenic Soft Flake Snow. And all I'm doing is using a spoon to sort of put some snow around my ice. Now, you're seeing now why I want it to be dry because Without it being dry, 
this snow is now stuck in my ice and I'll get up. Uh, I might get snow in places I don't want it and hide too much of the ice just like I have here. But what we can do now is we can take a very soft bristled brush and sort of move this snow around until we get it right where we want it. And we can do this without affecting the ice. So all I want to do is move this snow into areas where I think the snow would still be. You know, maybe because of a shadow or something else. And I want to put the snow only in that area. And sort of frame my ice a little bit. Once I'm satisfied with how that looks, we can either leave it or we can add more snow effects if we want to put, say, some, some shoveled snow or other material. So this is around the track here where theoretically you might get a little bit of a, of, of a plow action. So areas like this. But because it's so close to the transition, I'm going to make the assumption that most of that has melted away and this is just the, the remnants. So I'm going to leave it just as I have it here. Feather this out just a tiny little bit. And now my ice pack and my, my snow are exactly, let's get this pattern out of here, exactly how to want them. So moving on up the line, just slightly towards the winter scene from where we were. I've got another glob of ice here, and it it's sort of on its own. But I've got some shoveled snow here, so it's a little bit deeper. So I want to re sort of repeat this pattern and give it a little bit of shoveled snow. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the deluxe materials, shoveled snow, and pack it around that particular piece of ice right there. Okay, just having used a spoon to push this snow, this shoveled snow, uh, where I wanted it roughly. Now I'm going back in once again with my soft brush and I am moving the snow, breaking up some of the bigger clumps because it, it does clump and when it does, it some of it is just, it's not usable in, in, in end scale. So it's going to break that up a little bit and I'm going to drag this across here to give it like this snow was on the tracks and it got pushed off the side. Some of it, you know, might have rolled a little bit. And I'm going to pack this all down here. Be very careful when you're working track side because you don't want to build up your snow so high that the pilots of your locomotives or maybe a grab iron or something, you know, ladder rung hanging up off a rolling stock gets stuck. And before you know it, you're either tearing up your scenery or, uh, you know, you got a major derailment. So... Take a, take a quick look at that. Make sure you're far enough back away from your, you know, from your swing points, especially if you're on a, on a curve. And then once you get it sort of looking like that, you can call that, that part done. Uh, if you want to brush off where your ice is, you can. I kind of like a little bit of snow in there. It makes it look like it's, uh, you know, it's refrozen and some snow is blowing across it. Okay, once you're done selecting which areas are getting additional snow around your ice, you can spray the area with whatever a fixative you use, whether it's a spray adhesive. Uh, I used a combination of uh, white glue mixed probably about 30-70 with um, water and then, of course, a little bit of detergent so that it sinks in. And I, and I fixed all my scenery material. So... You can stop here if you want, um, but I add an extra step. And what that is, is I take some of the knock material and a very fine sifter, and I just shake that over the area I completed. Now, the reason I do this is this snow is fluffier and it's a, it gives a little bit of a shine that the Woodland Scenic snow just, it doesn't have. It's just not as, it's not as fine and snow-like of a material as this is. And I represent this anywhere where I want layers of, say, some fallen, you know, freshly fallen snow. So I'm going to go back over our areas. 
that I just did, and I'm gonna give them a fresh coat of snow. And as you can see, it does a really nice job of just sort of powdering on there. And bringing out a little more winter, and it hides some of the the woodland scenic stuff is very granular, and uh, that's okay, I guess, if you're building it up. But when you're doing it in thin layers, it, it doesn't um, it doesn't perform very well. Um, so thin layers for that stuff is it, it looks like you ballasted your snow. It doesn't look like snow, but this stuff is so fine and powdery that in thin layers, it looks like. It looks a little better like snow. And it has some properties in it that it, it sort of sticks a little bit. Um, so with a little bit of glue that was on the ground already, and with a little bit of uh, the, uh, you know, the, because it's still wet, um, I don't really fix this with anything else. Um, so from time to time, you might need to touch it up. But for the most part, unless you're working heavily in the area, this should be, this should be good enough. Once you get it where you want it and the snowpack is, is deep enough and you call it done, just take your fine brush again and clean up areas where you don't want the snow. And so once you're done with your scenery, I always go back through and clean the tracks. I use the wand and pads from the Tidy Track system by Woodland Scenics and I use a electronics cleaner instead of a track cleaner. I, I won't purchase a regular track cleaner because like I've said in some of my other videos, um, that's a large water content and water and rails are bad. So I use an electronics cleaner. I get very good connectivity with that and it has limited the amount of times I need to clean my rails in a year, I'm down to one major cleaning a year and then just spot cleaning as I work. But if you've followed the steps, either exactly as I've done or some variation thereof, you can get a scene that looks like this with snow and ice. Very convincing as far as, you know, it being a transitional period. And you also get the, the joys of being able to see that, you know, winter isn't all, all dead. And it's not all grays and whites. You can add some, some colors and still be seasonal appropriate. So I hope what I've done here is helpful to some of you. And you can take it to the next step if you need to. Or, or duplicate it exactly as you see it here. There's not really a wrong way to do it. So long as you get the icy effect that you're looking for. I recommend, like I said, you look at some pictures to see what it looks like. And... A real northern winter and with these products you should be able to duplicate that with relative ease. If you're running nighttime operations as some of you I know work on fast clocks, the winter scenes always look pretty awesome at night. You lose some of the details as far as the ice goes, but if you have street lights and other parts of your scenery, you can reflect that a little bit better. However, snowy nights with a full moon are some of my favorites, and you can recreate that fairly convincingly.